everybody welcome to my channel thank you so much for stopping by i hope you're doing well if you're new a huge welcome to you if you've been here before thank you so much for coming back today we're going to dive into the gorgeous world of bohemian style jewelry and i can't wait to show you what we're going to be making now if you don't know what bohemian style jewelry is let me just give you a quick rundown and i actually have some notes here that i made for myself it says boho short for bohemian is a fashion movement that embraces a carefree and unconventional approach to life it's a style that draws inspiration from cultures combining elements of the earthy the whimsical and the daring and when it comes to jewelry the boho aesthetic knows no bounds and that's a quick rundown about what boho is but anyway since boho is self-expression it's different for every single person some people like to use raw materials other people like to use crystals it's very individual it's like a celebration of individuality and self-expression that's how i see it and i've made boho jewelry before but i've never really explained what it is because i take it for granted that you already know but anyway guys since i've been doing a lot of single necklaces and necklace sets i thought i would do something different today and we're going to be making that gorgeous three strand necklace that you saw in the intro and yes the three strands are attached this time they're not separate necklaces i suppose if you wanted to you could make separate necklaces it's up to you but anyway we're going to be using the beads that came in Dee Dee's deluxe bead box for the month of may and if you're not familiar with that box i'll leave some information down below in the description section of this video so you can go to the website and check it out another thing i wanted to mention if you didn't buy the box you can always go to the website and see if you can find similar beads in any case i'm going to leave a list of all the materials down below in the description section of this video if you scroll down you'll see it i'm also going to leave a list of the tools that I'm going to be using today and as always I will leave some timestamps as well in case you want to skip forward to any portion of the video. Now if you're new and you think you might like my content please think about subscribing to my channel because it really does help my channel and it helps me to stay motivated to create more videos for you. Also don't forget that I always model my pieces at the end of the video so stick around for that. So anyway guys I can't wait to show you how to make this necklace and by the way we're going to be making some earrings as well so let's go ahead turn the camera around and we'll get started. And here we have Didi's Deluxe Bead Box for the month of May. The name of this box is A Taste of Summer. Let's go ahead and select the beads. What inspired today's necklace was this gorgeous elephant bead. I love this elephant bead. I think it's so adorable. And I love this strand. This is the Inspired by Czech's Designer strand. Each release of Didi's Deluxe Bead Box comes with one of these strands, and I've loved every single one of them. And we're gonna be using quite a few of the beads from this strand. I also wanna use some of these rondelles. I think these are so pretty. And these measure six by four millimeters. And as you can see, there are two types. Some of them are opaque and some are transparent, and we're probably gonna use the transparent ones. And I love these Jasper beads. These are so gorgeous. These are called Violet Mosaic Sea Sediment Jasper beads, and they measure eight millimeters in size. And I do want to use these glass pearls. I love this beautiful green color. The color is called Sage and these measure six millimeters in size. I also want to use these beads here. These are so pretty. I love this blue color. It's called Mystic Powder Blue and these are glass barrel beads. They measure eight by nine millimeters in size. And I do want to make a pair of earrings so I'll pull the ear wires out. There are so many other beautiful things in this box, but unfortunately, I don't have time to make something with each one of these items, although I would love to, but I'll have to save these for another day. Here we have some additional items. These are from my stash, they're not from the box. I have a lobster clasp and two six millimeter jump rings. I have two kinds of chain. This one here has oval links and they measure four by six millimeters. And from this chain, I'm just gonna use the ring portion. I'm gonna remove two of the rings for the necklace. The rings measure 11 millimeters across. And since they're open links, I can just open them up. I don't have to cut any portion of the chain to remove them. And over here, I have some head pins. I have ball head pins and flat head pins. I'm gonna use the ball head pins for the dangles. And I'm gonna use the flat head pins for the beaded components. What I'll be doing is removing the heads of the pins and then I'll be making some simple loops for the beaded components. And you're probably wondering why I don't just use craft wire. The reason is that I don't like the antique bronze colors of the craft wire that I've seen. It's usually a much shinier and darker color which doesn't match the chain at all. I have not come across a brand of craft wire that's this color. If you know of any brand I'd love to hear about it if you could leave some comments down in the comments section. And another reason I like to use flat head pins for beaded components sometimes is because they're very strong but they're thin as well so they hold up pretty well with large beads. Of course if you want to just use craft wire it's up to you. I would recommend that you use either 20 gauge or 18 gauge for this project. So now that we've gone over the materials we're going to go ahead and get started. We're going to start by working on the upper tier of the necklace and these are the beads we're going to use. As you know the necklace has three tiers. The upper tier will have a little dangle in the middle and I'm going to use the pearl and these two disc beads and the bead caps for the dangle. 
And I will be using a ball head pin for that. For the rest of the beads, I'll be using the flat head pins. Like I said before, I'm gonna remove the heads and do simple loops. But for the dangle, we're gonna do a wrap loop. So let me show you. I'm gonna thread on a bead cap. And then the pearl bead. And then the other bead cap. Just like that. And now the two disc beads. And now using my round nose pliers, I'm gonna grab the pin right where the bead is, kink the pin, switch to this part of the pin, take the tail, wrap it around the nose of my pliers, flip the pliers around, and continue to wrap that tail to the back. And now I'm gonna make some wrap loops I like to grab the loop with my skinny pliers. These are actually crimping pliers, but I like using them for this because they grab really well. And now with some needle nose pliers, I'm gonna grab the tail and I'm gonna create some wraps. I usually only do two wraps, but you can do as many wraps as you want to. Using my flush cutters, I'm gonna cut off the excess pin. And if you see anything sharp, you should tuck it in. So there's my dangle. So now we're gonna work on these beads. I'm gonna have six on one side and six on the other side and the dangle in the middle. Let me show you how to do this. I'm gonna get rid of the head of the pin Using my flat nose pliers, I'm going to grab the pin about three-eighths of an inch to half an inch down. It's up to you how big you want your loops. Kink it. And now with my round nose pliers, I'm going to grab the pin so that it's flush. And again, you need to decide how big you want your loops based on the pliers that you have. And I'm simply going to loop it. You want to make sure you close it really well and straighten it out if you have to. Just like that. And now let me load a pearl. Once again, I'm gonna grab the pin right where the pearl is. You want a little bit of space so you can create that kink. If you're right up against the bead, it'll be difficult to bend that pin. So you do need a little bit of space, but not too much. And now I'm gonna cut off the excess pin Once again, I'm gonna grab the pin with my round nose pliers, making sure it's flush, and loop it. Straighten your loop if you need to. And you do wanna make sure your loops are level, facing the same direction. So that's the first beta component. Now the loops are gonna be level on all of them except for two, the ones at the end, and I'll show you why later on. So now to save time, I'm gonna do the rest off camera and I'll be right back. As you can see, I've created all my beta components and now I just need to connect them. I'm gonna connect this side first and then I'll connect this side and then I'll connect both strands to the pendant. So let me show you how to do this. I'm simply gonna open up the loop, just like that. Connect the next beta component and then close up my loop. And I'm sure you just heard my cat. He's actually sitting on my lap right now. So now let me open up this loop. Connect the next one and close it up. And that's how I'm gonna do all of them. So let me speed up the film and I'll meet you back. As you can see, I've connected all my beta components and now we're gonna connect the pendant. 
and that's super easy. I'm going to open up this loop, connect the pendant, close it, and now let me open up this loop. Connect it to the pendant and close it. So there it is. I think it looks really nice. And this strand measures six and a half inches. Ultimately, it's going to be up to you how long you want your tears. You may decide you want them longer depending on how far down you want them to hang. So now that we've completed the upper tier, we're going to move on to the next tier down. Let me get the beads for that. Here are the items for the next tier down. I have the green pearls, I have the jasper beads, the rondelles, and the barrel beads. And these came from the designer strand. This pearl measures eight millimeters, and this bead measures 15 by six millimeters. I really love this one. I'm gonna use these to create the pendant for this strand. So let me show you how I'm gonna do this. I have a ball head pin. I'm gonna thread it through the bead. And you're probably wondering why I didn't use the flat head pins. I have a couple of reasons. I think the ball head pin is more decorative. And the other reason is that this bead actually has a very small hole. And so these flat head pins would not fit through it. So let me go ahead and thread on the bead cap. And the pearl. And the other bead cap. So this is what we have so far. And now I'm going to do a wrap loop, so I'm going to grab the pin right where the bead cap is, kink it, switch to this part, wrap the tail around the nose of the pliers, flip the pliers around, continue to wrap to the back, and now I'm going to do some wrap loops. So I'm going to grab the loop with my skinny pliers, Grab the tail and do some wraps. Snip off the excess. And now let me tuck in that sharp end. So there's my pendant. And now I'm gonna load these beads on wire. So let me put this off to the side for the time being. And by the way, guys, I wanted to mention, I actually switched to these cutters. These are memory wire cutters. And the reason I did that is because these pins are actually very strong and I didn't wanna wear down my good cutters. So now we're gonna create eight beaded components, four of one kind and four of the other. I'll show you how to make one and then the other, and then I'll do the rest off camera. Let me go ahead and take the head of one of these head pins. I'm using my memory wire cutters. And it's the same steps that I showed you before. We're gonna make simple loops. So I'm gonna grab the wire about three eighths of an inch to half an inch down, kink it. Using my round nose pliers, I'm gonna grab the end of the wire like this, making sure that it's flush. Loop it. And now I'm going to load one of these pearls and a jasper bead and another pearl. Once again, I'm going to grab the pin right where the bead is, leaving myself a little space so I can kink it. I'm going to cut off the excess. And now using my round nose pliers, I'm going to grab this end and create another loop here. Let me just make sure both loops are facing the same direction. So that's one bead of component. And like I said, I'm gonna make a total of four just like that. Let me show you the next one.
Once again, you want to make sure that you close your loop really well and straighten it out if you have to. This time I'm going to load a rondelle, a barrel bead, and another rondelle. Grab the pin right where the bead is, line up the bottom loop, kink it, snip off the excess, grab the pin with my round nose pliers, loop it. Let me straighten out my loops. They look pretty straight, but I always do this anyway, just to make sure. So these are the two different kinds of beta components. I'll be making four of these and another three of these for a total of four. So let me do that off camera and I'll be right back. As you can see, I finished all eight beta components and now I just have to connect them the same way that I connected the first tier. So let me show you. I'm gonna open up this loop, connect it to the pendant, close it. Open up this loop now. Connect the next one, close it, and that's how I'm going to connect all of them. So now I'm going to finish connecting these two, and then I'll connect all of these to each other and then to the pendant. So let me do that off camera and I'll be right back. As you can see, I've connected all the beta components, and this strand measures eight and a half inches. So it's two inches longer than the previous one. So now that we've completed this one, we're going to move on to the third tier. Let me get the materials for that. Here are the materials for the third tier. As you can see, I have my chain and that piece measures 12 inches. Now you may need a different length depending on how your strands hang. I'm giving you measurements, but ultimately it's going to be up to you. A lot of things can affect the length of the strands. For example, the beads that you use or the size loops that you make. So these are just guidelines, guys. Ultimately, you're going to have to decide on your own how long you want each strand or each piece of chain. Now this one's going to have a pendant and I'm going to use the elephant bead plus these other two beads from the designer strand. This little green pearl measures about three and a half millimeters and the spacer bead measures about three millimeters or maybe two and a half. It's not very big. So let me go ahead and build the pendant first. I'm going to slide the hairpin through the elephant like this. And by the way, the hole in this bead is quite small, so you don't want to use thick head pins. And now I'm going to slide the spacer bead and now the green pearl. Just like that. And just like before, I'm going to grab the pin right where the bead is, kink it, switch to this part, wrap the pin around the nose of my pliers, flip my pliers around, continue to wrap to the back. And before I do wraps, I'm going to attach it to the chain. So now we need to figure out which link is the center link. I'm going to bring my ends together and I'm going to slide a head pin through both ends. And this is the easiest way to find the center link. And it's this one right here. Let me just move these out of the way. Of course, you can always count your links if you want to, if you want to do it that way, but that's very tedious. So now let's go ahead and connect this. I'm simply going to slide the link of the chain into the loop that I just created. Just like that. Let me grab that loop with the skinny pliers. Grab the tail and do wraps. Cut off the excess. Tuck in the little sharp end. I 
I think it looks really cute. So now I'm going to create some dangles with these beads and attach them to the chain. Let me just show you one. I'm going to thread on the pearl and then a rondelle. Grab the pin right where the bead is, kink it, switch to this part, wrap the tail around the nose of my pliers, flip my pliers around, continue to wrap to the back. I'm not going to attach it just yet. I'm going to load the rest of these beads on a head pin and I'm going to do it off camera and then I'll come back and we'll attach them. Well, I'm back and I've prepared all four dangles. As you can see, I have not finished the wraps because I'm going to be attaching them to the chain. Now, whenever I have dangles on a chain, I always try to hang them all on the same side of each link. So for example, you wouldn't want to hang this one on the bottom side of that link and then this one on the top side of that link. And that's one of the reasons I like to use cable chain or roller chain. If you'll notice the links on the chain, some are horizontal or parallel to my mat and some are vertical or perpendicular to my mat. I'm going to be hanging the dangles on the links that are parallel to my mat and I am definitely going to count the links this time. So whenever I do this, I only count the links that are parallel to my mat. Let me just straighten out my chain. So if you'll notice, this one's vertical, this one's horizontal, this one's vertical, this one's horizontal, and so on and so forth. And I'm going to hang my dangles an inch and a half from the pendant. An inch and a half would be this link here, approximately, which is the fourth horizontal link from the pendant. Those are the only ones that I usually count. So let me go ahead and do that. I'm going to open up this loop a little bit to make it easier. Let me pick up the chain. And this is the link that I want to hang it on. Just like that. And now I'm going to grab the loop with my skinny pliers, grab the tail and do some wraps. Snip off the excess, tuck in the sharp end, As you can see, it's hanging off the bottom of that link and that's what you want. And that's how I'm going to do all of them. So let me do the next one. Once again, I'm going to open up the loop. And now I need to figure out which is the fourth link. It's this one right here. I'm going to slide the pin into the link like that. Grab the loop, grab the tail, and do my wraps. Snip off the excess. Tuck in the sharp end. As you can see, this one's hanging off the bottom of that link as well. So now I'm going to attach these two the exact same way and I'm going to do it off camera and I'll be right back. I'm back and I've connected everything as you can see. I'm pretty happy with it. I think it looks really nice. So now we're going to connect all three strands to the rings and we'll attach more chain at the top to finish off the necklace. Let me get the rest of the strands. Here are my three strands and I have my two rings. So now I'm going to connect everything to the rings and it may seem like an easy task, but it really isn't because you need to make sure your loops are facing the right direction and your strands aren't all twisted up. So one thing to keep in mind, and this is important guys, the loops that are going to be connected to the ring have to be vertical. They can't be horizontal because if they're horizontal, it's not going to hang properly. And I already know that these two loops are going to have to be changed. So they're not going to be facing the same direction. So the loop at each end of this beaded component is going to be perpendicular to this loop here. 
at the other end, if that makes sense. I've already looked at these loops the way they lay and I was able to figure that out. Let me just explain. If you look at this beta component, the loops are vertical. They're connecting to this pendant. Let me just pick it up and show you. It might be easier. Like I was saying, the first one has loops that are vertical. The next one has loops that are horizontal or parallel to the mat. This one has loops that are vertical and these two loops are horizontal. And this one cannot be horizontal. This one needs to be vertical. So I need to change this one and that's easy to do. I'm going to grab it with my pliers and I'm going to grab this one with another set and I'm going to turn them like this so they're perpendicular. So now it should connect properly to the ring. Same thing with this one. Let me go ahead and turn the loops. And the same thing on this side as well. And this one as well. And now it's all a big jumbly mess, but that's okay. Now the same rule applies to the chain, and I've already looked at the links to make sure that the last one hangs vertically. So that's another little detail you need to look at before you connect everything. So let me go ahead and open up this ring. Of course, before I hang the chain, I need to look at the links and I need to figure out which one's vertical. This is the vertical one. Same thing with this one. I want to make sure that pendant is hanging properly before I connect everything. Let me just make sure. I know it seems like I'm being picky, but trust me, if you don't do this properly, the necklace will be fighting you forever. It just won't hang properly. So now I'm going to slide this loop into my ring. Just like that. And now let me check this one. I need to hang it this way. And now let me close this ring. I'm just going to close it temporarily because I don't want to lose my strands. But I do need to attach a chain for the top part of the necklace. And now comes the difficult part. We want to make sure that we hang this properly. So once again, you want to examine your beta components to make sure they're not all twisted up when you put them into the ring. Let me open up the ring. I'm going to connect it this way. Let me just double check to make sure I did that right. And it looks like I did. So now we need to do this one. Always check your links, guys. You may think they're oriented properly when they're not. I've made that mistake a lot of times. I think that's right. So now I just need to connect the chain. Let me go ahead and close it and then I'll check everything one more time. Let me just check it real quick. That looks pretty good. I don't think I've connected anything the wrong way. I think it looks adorable and I love the colors. So now the only thing I'm going to do is attach a chain at the top and a clasp and call it a day. I was initially going to do some more beaded components at the top, but then I decided not to. Sometimes less is more.
So what I'll do now is take this to the mirror, hold it up to my chest, and figure out how much chain I need at the top, and I'll be right back. Well, I'm back and I figured out how much chain I need. For myself, I needed two pieces that were three and three quarter inches long. That's something you're gonna have to figure out on your own. Here's my clasp and two six millimeter jump rings. And this is very easy to do, but I'm gonna show you anyway in case there are any beginners. I'm just gonna open up the jump ring, attach it to this end of the necklace, and there's really no front or back to this necklace, so you can attach the clasp wherever you want. If you're right-handed, it's a good idea to attach the clasp on the right side of the necklace. But like I said, in this case, it really doesn't matter. Let me open up this jump ring now. Attach it to this end. And close it up. And how cute is this necklace? It's absolutely adorable. And I do want to put it on and show you what it looks like. But before I do, we're going to make a quick pair of earrings. So let me get the materials for that. Here are the materials for the earrings. As you can see, I've already built one of them. And yes, I know what you're thinking. The ear wire hooks are gold, but the metal on the rest of the earring is not. If you've seen any of my videos, you know that I always try to use hypoallergenic ear wires. And I usually use stainless steel. But this box came with 14 karat gold plated ear wires. So I thought I would use them. It's much safer to use solid gold or gold plated or stainless steel ear wires because base metals are usually a little bit irritating. I know for myself, I can't wear anything else because I break out almost immediately after I put on earrings that are made out of base metal. Of course, ultimately it's up to you. But anyway, as you can see, I've already built one of the beaded components and I used a Jasper bead and these two bead caps came in the designer strand and it's mounted on wire with two simple loops just like I've been doing, nothing different. This teardrop shaped bead also came in the designer strand and I have that one on a ball head pin. I am gonna do a wrap loop. So let me go ahead and do that. I'm gonna grab the pin at the top of the bead, kink it, switch to this part, wrap the tail around the nose of the pliers, flip my pliers around, continue to wrap to the back And now I'm going to do a wrap loop. So I'm going to grab the tail with my needle nose pliers and do a couple of wraps. Snip off the excess. Tuck in the little sharp end. And now let's connect the whole thing. I'm going to open up this loop, slide on this bead, close it up. And now I'm going to open up this loop, slide on the ear wire, and close it up. I think these are very attractive looking. I almost used the blue beads, but then I changed my mind. I think the Jasper beads look nice. Obviously you could use any of the beads that came in the box. So now I'm gonna bring out the necklace and arrange everything on my mat and show you the whole thing and I'll be right back. Well, here's the pretty boho necklace and earring set. I think it turned out lovely. I hope you like it as well. It's a very festive and colorful looking piece. And even though it has three tiers, it's actually pretty delicate looking. I know you can't tell right now on the mat, but you'll see in a few moments when I put it on what it looks like. So anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Let me put the necklace on and I'll be right back.
Well, what do you think about this necklace? Do you like it? I think it's really cute. I think I would wear this pretty much anywhere. You can dress it up or you can dress it down depending on what you wear with it. But I think what I like the most about this necklace are the beautiful colors. But anyway guys, I would love to hear your opinion about this necklace and about the tutorial. If you have time, I'd really appreciate it if you would leave some comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. I'm looking forward to seeing you again. Have a great day and I'll see you next time. Bye. Thank you.